Hey, I'm Chris F from Make Everything. Today we're gonna to try to fix this leaky aluminum boat. Check it out. All right, so this project is a little bit different. Now, I MIG weld a lot and I TIG weld pretty often as well, but one of the things that I don't have a lot of experience with is aluminum spool gun welding. Now, an aluminum spool gun looks something like this. And essentially what it is, is a MIG gun with a spool of soft aluminum right here in the gun, hence spool gun, pretty self-explanatory. And it hooks up to your MIG welder. Now your MIG welder has to be capable of using a spool gun, but most of them are. Now with a spool gun, you swap out your gas from C25 to a 100% argon gas as though you're TIG welding, and you flip a switch in your machine, switch the gun over from the regular MIG gun, and this will weld aluminum. Now the reason that I'm choosing to fix this boat with the spool gun is purely for experience. I could definitely TIG weld this and I'd have a much more controlled weld, but part of getting better at a process is by trying and trying in a practical application. I've done a bunch of spool gun welding on practice pieces, you know, two pieces of eighth inch and a T joint, stuff like that. And in that controlled environment, I can get a pretty decent bead. But on this crusty old aluminum boat, I don't know how the spool gun's gonna react. And that's part of the challenge. So let's see how I do on this. I'm not so sure I'm gonna do a great job, but we're gonna try it out. And what's cool about this is that I'm essentially gonna be able to weld this aluminum with my MIG welder, which I know a lot of people have and don't necessarily have a TIG machine yet. So maybe this opens up some capabilities for you in your shop. So let's get started. All right, so my buddy Lewis at Bitter Blade Co., he's also on YouTube and Instagram, showed up at my shop with this less than great aluminum boat. Um, it's got some sort of paint inside. It's got a bunch of cracks uh, and holes in it, and we're gonna try to fix it with the spool gun um, and see if we can't make it seaworthy. Watch till the end to see if it actually floats. Um, but before we do that, Lewis is gonna spend some time removing some of the paint and corrosion on it. And for, for that, he's gonna use these uh, poly clean, like kind of prep to paint discs. They're in different shapes. Um, and what's really nice about them is that they don't really remove material, but they remove paint and corrosion and stuff like that really well. I did a video on these. So he's gonna take a stab at this, see how clean he can get it. And uh, then we're gonna take it inside and try to weld it. So let's get started. So Lewis got this boat from a friend and apparently it had been washed up ashore for a while and he's gonna try to fix it, restore it, and inevitably try to get it out on the water. So the first thing we're gonna do, like I said, is we're gonna try to get the paint off of the areas that have holes in them. Now we're using the PolyClean discs because they're not gonna remove material. This boat is very old and the material is very, very thin. So not removing material when we're removing the paint is super important. Now we could use like a chemical stripper on this, but I like the idea of using an abrasive or at least like a scuffing pad versus a chemical, a chemical remover, just because those chemicals can be pretty nasty and pretty hard on your skin. So Lewis is taking care here to remove the paint from where the transom is gonna be and anywhere that I'm gonna need to be welding. Now again, these polyclean discs are great because they don't really go below the surface of the metal itself, but they will remove any of the paint, similar to a wire wheel, but can be more effective in certain applications. Once he's done with that, we bring the boat inside and then we can start the process of welding it. Now, like I said, I'm using a Power MIG 210 here to spool gun weld this. Now, there's a switch inside the machine that basically turns off the drive rollers and transfers power to the spool gun. And then with the spool gun hooked into the front of the machine, I can select that as the process and you'll see the aluminum wire coming out of the gun right there. Now with this set up, I go ahead and give it a try. Now. At my first attempts here, I noticed that immediately I was just burning through the material. I was just running too hot. And I had my machine set down pretty far, so I knew that this was gonna be a learning curve type of experience. Because I ruined that little section, I decided to cut that out and then add a piece of new eighth inch thick aluminum and tried to use that to salvage this little back section of the boat. Now I found that the spool gun had a lot easier time welding to the kind of virgin material than it did to the base material on the boat and I really think that that was just because the thickness of the material on the boat was so minimal, it was super, super thin. Now I'm doing a little bit of kind of dabbing as I go and I'm trying to concentrate my heat towards that eighth inch thick piece of kind of good brand new aluminum. 
and I'm using that fume extractor just to try to get any impurities kind of out of my face. Now I know I have a good weld because you can see that I just bent over that piece of aluminum with a hammer as I curved it around that piece and I'm continuing, continuing to weld and then I'll go ahead and take the grinder and grind some of that material down. Now this isn't going to look super pretty but I'm going for structural here um, and if it doesn't look great I'm alright with that. Lewis is going to be sanding and epoxy painting this whole thing anyway so he's going to be able to blend this even a little bit further after I'm done. Now again I try to weld a little corner. I do a little more burning through, so I back it up with a piece of aluminum, and I found this to be a really good strategy for welding this thin stuff. I could put a piece of eighth inch aluminum behind any holes and then weld from the top, sort of plug weld it, and that would allow me a nice base material for me to get through and actually make a pretty decent weld. Now there's a couple cracks in these upper corners, but the really bad cracks are down in the bottom. There's a really bad, like kind of open corner uh, underneath this back side of the boat, and once I'm done welding up these top corners, I'm going to get down there and I'm going to try to rebuild it. Again, just sort of trying to fill any gaps that I can. Lewis went ahead and chased out some of those holes with a drill bit too. So now I make a template to fill in this corner. Um, we had put some tape over it just so that I could try to make the template out of tape, but I wound up making it out of cardboard, basically a three-piece corner. And I used those cardboard pieces and traced them onto a piece of eighth-inch aluminum sheet and then I cut them out over on the bandsaw so that I can weld these together and then weld this whole patch corner to the actual corner of the boat. Now because I was having so much trouble welding to the base metal, I didn't want to try to actually fill the holes in the corner, thinking that that would be an area of the boat that would absolutely get hit if you were to like run aground or even drag the boat on the ground. So I kind of pre-assembled this corner and did a little bit of tacking up on top of the boat. And then I could go ahead and kind of hammer the material down on the bottom into place and stick that on the corner just like a band-aid. Now I had a way easier time welding the actual virgin eighth inch material. Still not super great because I really just don't have a lot of practice with a spool gun, but I didn't have any of that burning through. I was able to weld the inside and the outsides of those corners and had pretty good results that I felt were going to be watertight. Cleaned them up a little bit and then sort of banged this thing onto the bottom. Now welding around the outsides of this to the boat hull is going to be tricky because that material is still very thin. But I kind of bounce around with my heat and try to do my best not to burn through. But what was really good about this was once I was done, I noticed that I did penetrate through the base metal and I could see some of my weld on the inside, which made me know that this really stuck. The other thing I could do when I was done is go inside the boat and weld from the inside out because I had that nice eighth inch backing behind it that I could really, you know, make it really, really strong on there. After I was done welding, I kind of ground everything to sort of smooth things out, make it a little more hydrodynamic, and then I could go ahead and flip the boat over and weld the bottom section of it. Like I said, this is really the worst corner. There was about a three quarter inch hole in the back corner of that boat, and we definitely wanted to make sure that it didn't leak there. So after welding that base material to the hull, you can see I got a pretty good bead there and it didn't really burn through. And it's strong enough that I could go ahead and while it was still warm, hammer it into place and sort of try to retake some of the shape of the boat that I lost by adding that piece of plate there. And nothing a grinder can't fix, make it look a little bit better, even though those welds aren't the most beautiful thing in the world. This thing's not winning any beauty contest, but it's definitely going to keep the water out. Now on this other side of the boat, one of the upper corners had a pretty bad hole in it. So we, again, we used some plates and welded those on there and I have to kind of fill that corner gap. But what I did notice was that as I was welding this, I was able to go in with a hammer or a mallet and I was able to move the material around. Now had these welds cracked as soon as I hit them, I would have known that maybe my filler metal wasn't mating with my base metal. But you can see here, these welds remain flexible, which was really good and a really good sign that these welds were gonna hold up and that this experiment was actually going to work pretty well. You can see as I start to blend that corner, things look a little bit better. And then I just have to run that bead up into that corner, which turned out pretty good. And I can go ahead and blend that back in as well and sort of hammer things out from the inside. Anywhere that I did kind of poke through with my weld, I would weld in from the backside. And in the end, I was able to get a really nice and secured corner here, which was pretty tricky. Again, I think this base hull material was 16 gauge, 18 gauge, or even thinner. And the last thing to do was to weld the handle on the front, which had these aluminum rivets. I basically plug welded these, and I had a little bit of a weird weld there. It was a little bit hard to kind of get it in. But then once I ground it, 
all of the welding that I had to do was done and I could hand this over to Lewis to sort of try to finish it up and continue to clean up my messy work. We did our best with the spool gun. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it was not easy to weld this. And I used the spool gun because I was trying to kind of give myself an exercise in learning the ways of the spool gun and how to adjust it. I've used one before, but only really in practice welds. And this was the first opportunity to kind of try one in a real scenario. Now, this boat was made in 1979? 1973, it sat outside for a long time. I don't actually know what type of aluminum it is, um, but I had a really hard time welding to it. And I think it's just because it's so thin. It's like, it feels like 16 or even 18 gauge in some spots. And that being said, when I was welding those new aluminum corners out of just brand new eighth inch material, the spool gun did fine. It was when I was trying to fill holes and weld to this. But anyway, Lewis is gonna take this, clean it up, and then we're gonna bring it out on the water and see if it sinks. And lucky for me, I won't be in it. Lewis will. So let's see what happens. All right, so that about does it for this video. Um, he survived. Um, I'm glad that Lewis's boat didn't sink. Um, like I said, I did not do a great job on those welds, but I made a watertight weld that penetrated their base metal and that's really what mattered. They didn't look great. A Little bit of grinding, that saved it. I didn't make this video to show you how to fix a broken boat, but I made this video to show you how if you have a MIG welder and you want to do aluminum repairs, you could get yourself a spool gun get some argon, and then start to learn that process um, and expand on your welding capabilities. I learn every day as I try new things, and one of the things that I look out for is projects that'll allow me to try something new and really kind of have a practical example for it. Practicing on tube is great, but practicing on something where Lewis might wind up at the bottom of the Long Island Sound, I like that. High risk, high reward. It worked out great. Thank you to Lincoln Electric for always supplying me with amazing equipment. Check out the 210 MP and their new machine, the 215 MP, which will be in a link down below. I don't have that machine yet, but when I do, I'm going to be doing some awesome videos on that. That'll use a spool gun. This will use a spool gun. I know their 140 MP will use a spool gun. So keep an eye out for a machine like that. Maybe get one for your shop and maybe you fix a crusty old John boat too. Anyway, if you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me right here at Make Everything Shop. If you want to check out Lewis's channel, he's got a YouTube and a cool Instagram right here, Bitter Blade Co. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below, especially if you're a spool gun guy. Leave some tips on how to do better on that really, really thin material. I had a lot of trouble. I burned through, but I was able to kind of, kind of back it up, salvage those welds, and again, the boat did float, so I guess I did a good enough job. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed this and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, more welding videos and videos here in my shop. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Chris Zepp for Make Everything and I'll see you on the next one.